This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, this is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here. The show where we talk with professional wrestlers, people around professional wrestling, talking about the love of professional wrestling. Uh, and, uh, and myself, a video producer, of course, with uh, IndieWrestling.us, Sorgatron Media, working with the IWC and the RWA locally and other promotions over the years. And documentaries, I guess I should mention that too. Uh, you can check out everything Indie Mayhem Show um on itunes stitcher speaker iheart radio drop us a line let us know anybody you think should be on the show people coming up uh if you have questions for them look for the events on the wrestling mayhem show facebook page and the live streams and uh drop us a line for good times at wrestling mayhem show.com and 412-206-wms0 is the hotline i know it's going to be on the speed dial of my two guests tonight also thank you to our patreon uh providers uh supporters patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show if you want to support what we're doing over here so my guest tonight uh we booked about a month ago and there's been some interesting events since then mm. that i want to get into mm. i try i don't i i swear i don't exclusively try to book people from a certain promotion but they're the ones i interact with it happens but i'm trying to branch out and then all of a sudden locked and loaded are on the docket and they show up at an iwc show and walk away with that goal absolutely locked absolutely. and loaded with us duke davis and gannon jones jr finally on the show thank you for joining us we lit <laughs> hey, thanks for having us i appreciate it and by the way we talked about this on mayhem show we talked about this on mayhem show gold um you know if you guys check that out uh and uh and these are the best dressed guests i think we've ever had i can't think of anybody since maybe vicky gambino back in the day as well dressed as but that's a different that's that's a different it's different. That's definitely different. Um, but I'll, t- I'll take that that yeah. that title of best dress. That's another title yeah. that we just took. We just took them just like that. Showed up, took it, debuted, and took titles. Hmm. That's funny. So, very familiar. Very familiar. <laughs> and look, and hopefully, whoever's on your show after this steps up their game, their wardrobe game, and decides to wear something more than a t-shirt. You know. I think Shirley Doe is next. Well, oh, he's definitely wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> definitely wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> I've never seen him not wear a t-shirt. Doe, if you're watching this, of. I want a bow tie out of you. I could tell oh. you what Doe's gonna wear. What's that? A black t-shirt, maybe like a band t-shirt. Yeah, a band t-shirt. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be black. Yeah. Uh, camos shorts. Mm-hmm. His black socks and his uh, white and black Nikes. Boom. Boom. Yes. You taking note of that over there? We got we got we got to compare notes next week. Yeah, watch. Um, yeah, Don't worry, I'll, exactly. I'll be all on to make sure he wears it. <laughs> Checking up on him, you know. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. Well, hey, first let's get to know you. A question for people maybe haven't checked you out yet. Um, what is your earliest memory of pro wrestling? You got one. You got one. You go first. My earliest memory of pro wrestling um, is <sighs> earliest memory. Honestly, it is. Probably Hogan joining the NWO. Ooh. Yeah, that's probably the first thing that like that, that I keep going back to. I'm like, that was cool. That also like started my love with heels. Like I thought bad guys were the coolest thing ever. So when Hogan did that, I was a huge Hollywood Hogan fan. Mm-hmm. From that point on, I thought it was the coolest thing. So you at the time where you kind of knew the wrestling, like, did you know the kind of backstory of Hulk Hogan being a good guy for like? It feels like 20 years at that not, point. Not really, because what year did that happen? Was uh, that? 96, 96, I believe. Yeah, so I was seven years old at this point. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I wasn't very old. Um, my aunt, uh, Aunt Eva, God rest her soul, she was a huge wrestling fan. Um, she liked Lex Luger, and she actually got me into wrestling. She probably just thought he was cute and was muscular. Hey, uh, Flexi Lexi, right? Right. Um, so she actually got me into wrestling, and... I knew of Hogan because of her. Um, and I knew he's like this big, good guy and mm-hmm. he's a hero. And that kind of annoyed me. So as soon as that happened, I was like, that is the coolest <laughs> thing ever. Like, I love him now. So 
because up until that point, I, I like Ric Flair, mm-hmm. I like the bad guys, I, I, for sure. So that was probably my earliest memory. So I'm gonna piggyback off that. Okay. The bad guy. Okay. Oh. My earliest memory was not even Razor Ramon wrestling. It was his vignettes. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I thought it was so cool. I was like, I don't know this, who this person is, but he's the coolest guy on television right now. And you probably weren't like familiar with, you know, you know the uh, the Pacino stuff that he was kind of taken off from there too. Right? It was age. just like this is original, right? Yeah, I had no idea. Not same, that same boat here, same boat here. Yeah, I had so, no oh, idea. Cool Cuban guy, mm-hmm. something. Yeah, yeah. Dude, <laughs> who I was like, hey, dude, wh- whoever this guy is, he's cool. I like him, and of course, you know, you don't know if he's gonna be, a, you know. He came as the bad guy, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It was just like a cool, authentic thing that came across to me. Mm-hmm. And then when I saw, and then another great memory was when he, uh, him and Shawn Michaels wrestled 10, I mean, uh, WrestleMania 10. Yeah, that was like one of my favorite matches ever. Interesting enough, I actually liked Scott Hall more than Razor Ramon. Really? Yeah, mm-hmm. and I, I think I'm, I'm a, on a very small island by myself with that one but you know, know he why. was scott he when he was scott hall he was ra- he was really just being raised yeah i know but for some reason him in wcw with the blood dripping trunks and vest i don't know i like that the I look think, the look of it was it wasn't cartoony no more yeah like i thought he was like more serious i don't know what was the presentation maybe as like the outsider but you know the you know the the invader that, kind of guy like and he was like a dude that that was just his name maybe that that may be it and i was a big outsiders fan uh, i was a big tag wrestling fan in general so them as a, as big guys i thought that was really cool so maybe that had something to do with it. them invading and going to get titles huh, huh. and being mm. big guys big guys Interesting. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Okay. All right. All right. We got that. We'll get to that other part later. But so how? So from there, um, you guys obviously big wrestling fans. From there, like what kind of turns the corner to this is something I want to get in the ring and do. For for me, it was um. So it was. It's crazy. I actually, uh, when I was eighteen, um, went to to try out for for wrestling. What was it called? It that time um coalition of competition it was um i think it was like an iwc like it was early iwc yeah yeah and i and doe was the trainer it's funny Mm -hmm. he's on next week Mm -hmm. and we'll have him we'll ask him about you yeah and i literally (laughs) i i started i did probably trained for like four or five months Mm -hmm. and school started back up and it was um the train was only thursday nights and i had a thursday night class that was super important i couldn't switch it around so that whole semester, I just quit going to training. I couldn't make it. And mm-hmm. then after that, I was just like, all right, I'm just not going to wrestle. It just, it just isn't meant to be. And then fast forward, I think I was 24, three or four. And I was like, like at this point, I'm not, like, I'm not doing anything anymore. I'm out. I'm done with school. I'm just like, I'm like bored. I'm like, all right, you know, maybe, maybe I can be a wrestler. Let me find out where I can give this another shot and, I think just being a fan, just kind of like most people who get into wrestling, they're a fan of it first, and then they want to do it and then go for it. So, kind of my try to second try kind of worked out for me a little bit better. Awesome. You? Well, the what led to it was uh, a couple of things, but what led to me just one. I, I had an itch for. I played football in high school, uh, high school and college. And I just wanted to hit something very bad and, like, not play football. (laughs) I didn't want to play football anymore. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to do something with my hands. I didn't want to box. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, what can I do? And uh, it just so happened that I met uh, Jack Pollock. And he introduced me to um, Brandon Kay. And that's how I got into training. I just wanted, and it was just a couple of meetings, and that's how it happened. Did that transfer from from football to that? Like, you know, you're used to getting hit. You know, was does that make it a little easier to kind of transition into what what goes into wrestling? Yeah, it takes away the fear. Mm-hmm. I think uh, you're not afraid of pain at that point. No, because you've felt you've been hit before. Mm-hmm. It also takes away that fear of performing in front of people mm. because football from 
little league all the way up, it's all you do is perform in front of people. And uh, getting, like I said, getting hit and getting back up is kind of the, the name of the game in football. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to get hit and you're going to get back up. That's how you play football. And with wrestling, it's the same. The, the intensity is the same thing. You're going to get hit and you're going to get back up. You got to keep going. So, like, that took, for me, that helped. It was a, it was a good thing to fall back on. And then, like, the, the tag team thing, like, the team camaraderie thing, like, it just made sense. Mm-hmm. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, both of you started out as singles wrestlers, correct? Correct. So, mm-hmm. and again, and I know I've, I've been aware of you for a while between VOW, PWX over the years. Um, and I know you, you kind of stuck out because you had this, like, kind of football player kind of thing. I know Chachi got to see you for the first time at a show at the beginning of the year. And saw you read your play off yeah. your arm, and he just like loved it ever since. He was he was down with that. Can you talk a little bit about what you know? Getting Jones Jr. has been up to this point, and, and kind of how that's developed. Yeah, um, it, it's crazy because when I when I first started, um, everywhere I go, everywhere I went, they wanted to use me as the big monster heel because mm-hmm. I'm six five. And I'm bigger than most people. Yeah, the there's 80s. not a lot of. Yeah, big guys and it makes sense. And I explained this to Duke over lunch one day, and he was like, "Wow, that this is knowledge." Because I remember I I said this to him, and I'm this, picturing you guys at a cafe, you know. <laughs> we're not going to. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> but, but it was lunch. But I, I remember I said to him, I said, um, "I never wanted to be billed that way. I never wanted to go in and wrestle as strictly a big guy and limit myself." Because in high school, I was, you know, I was same height, 6'4", 6'5", mm-hmm. and I played center in high school. Uh, going to college, if you're 6'4", 6'5", you're not a center anymore. Mm-hmm. You're now a point guard. But in high school, I was never allowed to dribble. I was never allowed to shoot. I was doing center things. So as soon as I graduated high school, I could not play basketball anymore because my skill set was all jacked up. So as soon as I got into wrestling, I was like, I'm not doing this. I'm not typecasting myself as the the proverbial big guy great collie type of feel um and i kept saying to myself i'm the same height as um randy orton i'm the same height as like a like a gender mahal like they're you know six four six five they're mm-hmm. triple h you know mm-hmm. but when you think of them you don't think of them as you know the big guy on the show so that's how i kind of wanted to position myself i just wanted to be a performer an athlete you know a champion and not this big guy so it, it was like you were kind of thinking to the future yes right because if you're you're playing a monster and then you get in there with these guys you're just like well i'm just another guy I'm what do i do right yes so i was kind of trying to future proof myself so you know i got there they're like you know just you know choke slam and you know we mm-hmm. get some big clotheslines like yeah yeah cool sure i'm doing moonsaults off the top rope to the outside of the ring mm-hmm. i'm doing standing shooting star presses because i'm like i'm able to do this this is how I envision myself as a performer. So this is this is how Gannon is going to wrestle. I'm not going to wrestle like that. And I think after a while, they kind of were just like, all right, this is. And it feels like, at least maybe locally, I'm noticing this because I know, you know, I, I've talked about the kind of size of wrestlers on the Indies, and I'm a 6'4 guy myself. So, you know, you walk up the Ray Row and you're just like, oh, I'm short of that guy. And you saw him as the monster, mm-hmm. like back in the day, you know, against the, you know, the Jimmy DeMarcos and things like that. You know, I remember walking backstage at IWC recently and I looked around just like, wow, I'm not the biggest guy here. You know, you guys are standing there, you know, and, and uh, a couple other guys have been there uh, for a bit. And, and like these, you know, and nothing against the smaller guys or, you know, and everything, you know, uh, of the entire roster. But it's just like, oh, these are like, you know, a wrestler size mm-hmm. guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, um, and, and it just kind of makes it kind of makes sense at that point. It's cool to see that's kind of grown and, and you guys being a part of it. Yeah. So. Um, what about you, you Duke? Uh, as far as like... Because I know you as the guy that comes out and, and yells at me uh, <laughs> exclusively. <laughs> so. You mean as far as like... Uh, Your development as... My development. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess you can look at it like this. Uh, I did the opposite of, of Gant. I don't know if you could tell. We're, we're pretty much opposites. <laughs> but... Uh, I did the opposite. When I came in, I was kind of just like uh, I was that that guy, that big man, that choke slam artist, that uh, two, two, three, maybe four moves of doom guy. 
And that's that was my beginning. And then, uh, like, right w- actually, it was right when I spoke to him. He told me about he had a he gave me a, he gave me his epiphany and it became mine. He said, you know, we've been you know you can tight cash yourself and be that six five monster, and then you get say you get a shot. What are you gonna do? You're gonna be that six five monster amongst other six five plus monsters, the two hundred fifty pound monsters. Who are you gonna be? Mm-hmm. And at that point, I was like, man, you're right. And he said the thing about basketball. We I played basketball too in high school. It was like we were sinners our whole lives because we were always taller than people, mm-hmm. always taller than people. And then all of a sudden, like you go to college, six five, six four, those guys are the guards now with the that can shoot. And I was like, he was like, you know, we can do we can do this and keep ourselves here, or we can do something different. And at that point, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try something different. And uh, basically, I started looking at different uh, different wrestlers because I wanted to be a little bit different. Like I didn't want to be just the guy that comes down to stare at people and just you know grits his teeth. So I wanted to be something different. And uh, like it's funny, but. <laughs> He helped me with, you know I mean, again, he helped me with that. You know, the other people as, as well. But when he said that, it like sparked or something in my mind. Like, oh, shoot, let me look at some other stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, and I started looking at Scott Hall at WCW compared to when he was like at WWE. He was doing a lot of bigger, big man stuff at WWE. But when he went to WCW, he was actually doing a lot more working. Mm-hmm. You know, he had matches with Chris Benoit, like smaller guys. You know, not Chris Benoit, but Chris uh, Chris Jericho. Okay. He matched with Chris Jericho, and that's a smaller guy compared to Scott Hall's, like almost six eight. Mm-hmm. You know, people forget about the guys like legit tall. Huge, mm-hmm. yeah. So, and he's not six five. You know what I mean? So I couldn't. I started to look at stuff he did when he went there because he started working more, more to the guys he was working with. And bringing that talents together, so I was like, "How would I react in a fight uh, against a guy that's smaller than me?" Mm-hmm. And so I started studying that and helping get the metahuman where he needs to be. Tell me about the the metahuman as as kind of a concept here too. Um, so I'm I'm like into I'm, I'm different. I, I'm I'm into comic books a little bit, mm-hmm. but not a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm into like superheroes and all that, a little bit not, but not like super corny stuff. I was really into. You're, you're not. You're not about to start uh, cosplaying like I'll leave a Bates out. There. Nah, I won't <laughs> do that. I know some some of my some of my guys do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just not into it. I'm, yeah. I'm more of a if it's a dope character like hmm. the Dark Knight. You know, he really wasn't like a super villain. You know, he wasn't a villain. He wasn't a hero. He just, just did what he did you know what i mean it was like a dark character um so i like stuff like that and then i was like thinking because first i was dangerous duke davis but that came off to me as 80s and uh one of my good friends uh ty cross hit me up and he was like you ever think about the metahuman and uh it's like do some research on metahumans so i started watching like watching uh luke cage and stuff like that because Luke Cage is like a metahuman. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just took it and ran with it. And uh, that became me. Like, it, it, it makes sense. It was like, oh, yeah, I'm not. Because I'm not. Because if that, when you met me, I was I was taller than everyone else. Looked different than everyone else. Mm-hmm. But I'm still the, I'm still a wrestler like everyone else. Like a metahuman and is still a human being. He still can die. <laughs> you know what I mean, but something about him makes him different, mm-hmm. and that's what it is. He just kind of throws that question mark out there. Yeah, that's great. Um, so tell me about you know you said you kind of you got together you, you kind of laid out this tag team idea. You know what what brought you together as a team? I I think it kind of started with I mean we both really like tag wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I feel like it's. It's something that doesn't get as much attention anymore um, as much. Um, but guys like, you know, the Young Bucks, you know, are kind of helping revitalize, you know, what tag team wrestling is, which is awesome. Um, so we're, we're just kind of hoping to ride that wave and, and do it. Um, there's a lot of singles competitors out there um, that stand out, but there aren't too many 
big tag teams out there that stand out. Um, there's there's a good handful, but um, not as many as there, there could be. So uh, I feel like instead of focusing on being a, a singles act, which there's you know hundreds, thousands of you know, across many countries, you know, come together and try and be a super dominant, um, exciting tag team. A real tag team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not just two, not just two single guys put together. Right. So that's kind of like what when we first got together, it was kind of like our biggest thing. We got to make sure that everything we do is as a team. Mm-hmm. From interviews to shows to anything, pictures, we wear, you know, we 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 are locked and loaded, period, where we're at. And uh, that was like one of our ground bases when we first started talking about it. It was like a year ago. And uh, it was kind of like an idea. We just kicking around, you know, just kicking around back and forth, and it just, we just kind of made it happen. Mm-hmm. We were like, "All right, we're gonna do this." We, I mean, one time hit me up. He was like, "If we don't do this, someone else is gonna do it." So we need to. Someone else is gonna become six five with dreadlocks and <laughs> gonna take our idea. And we're not gonna be able to do it anymore. Uh, you never know. The, the the young bucks will have a growth spurt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. Uh, yeah, and, and that was great because when I was, you know, uh, you know, interacting with you guys on Twitter, you know, especially you know after seeing you guys on the shows and everything, and 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 seeing you guys develop, and and then I started noticing like, oh wait, there's a locked and loaded Twitter that's interacting with me now. You know, today I I came across your website, you know, and we we kind of joked that your social media strategy sessions on the whiteboard at the end of uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show 585. Um, you know, talk about that. Like, you know, so you guys, you know, obviously wrestling, you're branding yourself. So you kind of turn that into where, you know, the, the, the team is the brand now, right? Right. Like, yeah. Like not too many people come into IWC and already have a promo or an, an intro video. <laughs> I've noticed. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We, uh, we, yeah, I mean, kind of like he was saying, we, that the whole team aspect, we want everything to, to look good and, and be very team oriented. Um, mm-hmm. It's even gotten to the point where we, we've turned down bookings uh, at places because they were trying to bring us in singles. Um, so like we're that, you know, focused and dedicated on doing or on doing the tag thing. Um, and as far as social media goes, it's a great tool. It's something that a lot of wrestlers before us didn't have mm-hmm. and they kind of had to do it on their own and, you know, just trying to make a name for themselves. But we have all these things at our, you know, disposal. So, you know, why not use it? Why not kind of have our fingers, you know, all over the place and, and using as many of these platforms as possible. Yeah. And that video was a big thing because we, we, we always look to do something that's, that no one else is doing in the area. Uh, we actually had the uh, uh, camera guy. It's funny, but we knew him separately. Mm-hmm. That's a different story for a different day. <laughs> uh, his name is Jamie Chalmers, and uh, we had him just basically just follow us and uh, basically film us backstage and a little bit uh, on the when we were uh, you know in the basically uh, coming out just to get a feel of who we are. Uh, we didn't think that it was going to you know get that big of a reception like that. That's uh, all I heard was, oh my God, that video is so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't think it was going to happen like that. We kind of was like, here, uh, you know, Plumber, like, what can you do with it? He, he did the rest of it, but we didn't see that happening. So it was kind of just like, well, I'm glad we had something, mm-hmm. you know, instead of nothing. And then we always thinking about that. Like, we, I'm glad I brought, like, these wristbands up. Bringing wristbands, why? Because then you give it to people, they can remember you. At least they have something they can put on. Something clicks in their head to, yeah. to for the next time they come across you or the name pops up on, on an indie board or something, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, and, and that was great. That was great. You know, myself, I was, I was ringside for that show uh, on camera. And, and when you guys came out and hearing, like, I'm catching more of what fans are saying, especially as new people are debuting. I'm hearing, oh, yeah, those are the guys from T- PWX. Oh, those are Pittsburgh guys. They're great. You know, things like that. Yeah. You know, so, and to see that reaction uh, firsthand was, was pretty great. What, um, you know, you talked about kind of changing the, 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 the status of like uh, tag team wrestling at this point. Um, as far as where you're going, whether in the area or, or wherever you're traveling, kind of how do you see that the tag team divisions kind of being represented at this point? I know. I think it, it varies, um, you know, place to place with like some promotions and some regions, if you want to even call them regions anymore, um, put more emphasis on tag team wrestling. Um, 
but you know, like I said, I, I don't feel like it's utilized enough. I, you know, um, like you were saying, you, you thought we had a pretty good, you know, reaction when we came out. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you put that much focus on teams more, I mean, you could have those type of moments, and those type of reactions, um, a lot more often. And uh, so I mean, this, the status of, of tag team wrestling, um, I don't know. I think it could be better. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's, it's a trickle down effect. Uh, I think a lot of people, they base a lot of their own shows off of what they see on television. Mm -hmm. Instead of, it used to be the indies sparked what they, what the bigger brands did. You know what I mean? Or the territory sparked what the bigger companies did. Now it's kind of like they see what's on television. They're like, oh, I'm going to use that. I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. Not just saying like WWE, like they see Lucha Underground. They all oh, I'm going to take that and do that. Instead of the other way around. Like, you know, not to sound crazy, but uh, I always look at, like, what we're trying to do is kind of, like, come into a situation where we're trying to uh, make it so that you can put us wherever you want. On television, you can put us in someone's backyard. You can put us in a big arena. We're still going to be as entertaining as we would anywhere else. Like, not because we're on television, we're entertaining. Mm -hmm. you know we're going to be entertaining wherever we're at so that's kind of like a, that's that's kind of what I'm seeing like tag wrestling mm -hmm. like some guys do flippy stuff and that's cool but it's like if they weren't doing it up there do we, we be doing it out here like you know what I mean like sometimes you, like I saw a guy jump off the top of a building almost like to to hit someone that's on like a table and he missed. Oh, that classic that video that's been going around. Yeah. And I just kept thinking about it. I was like, if he never saw Shane McMahon or Mick Foley do that, do mm -hmm. you think he would try that? Mm -hmm. Probably not. So like tag wrestling, like where we came from was not a big thing. But now we're in a situation where tag wrestling is like pretty prominent. It's like they have tons of teams, you know, and we're just, you know, uh, there to soak that up mm -hmm. there's a lot to work with yeah and, and it, like you said different yeah. areas different people see different tag wrestling right canada is another big place that we want to go to for tag mm -hmm. wrestling so even in texas like you know down at uh for booker t's organization like they do big tag wrestling things down there so it's like different places look focus at it different. More. focus yeah. on it more and i think there's noise of maybe WWE might be doing a tag tournament in the in the Near future, I mean, it could be a year from now. Yeah. But uh, but you could you know we're seeing that with women's wrestling, saw so cruiser weights. You know what could kind of come out from there. Yeah. So that'd, that'd be cool too. Yeah. Excellent. So where where um you mentioned young bucks and things, who do you guys look to in because I don't think we talked about it. Who do you look to in tag teams for kind of inspiration? It's funny you should say that. Um, sometimes um, mo I should say most times we'll actually talk at the beginning of the week. Mm -hmm. And kind of map out um, either uh, a time period of tag wrestling that we want to watch or a specific team that we want to watch um, and just kind of go off of that. Like, we'll go through a phase, we'll just watch um, ECW tag team wrestling mm -hmm. and nothing else and just watch that. Um, a lot of tables. Yeah, a lot of tables. <laughs> a lot of tables. A lot of tables and crazy stuff. <laughs> a lot, of, lot less tags, if I recall. Yeah, yeah they ain't really <laughs> tagging it out. Yeah. But um, so then we'll just, just to get a different feel to see what people are doing. Obviously, you don't, you're not going to get the answer, you know, mm -hmm. from any one match. Um, but I, I, I don't know if we, if we draw from everywhere, man. Yeah. Like we, mm -hmm. it'll be a week where he'll be like, "Hey, let's just watch DX. Let's watch uh, Road Dog and Billy Gunn. Mm -hmm. Watch New Age Outlaws, and we'll just watch that." Or I'll be like. Hey, I just saw this Billy and Chuck match, man. You gotta check these guys out. They're crazy, but they're like they're doing cool stuff in the ring. Mm. Or we'll be they were like, they were a good team. Yeah, like, like yeah. you know, for all the the you know stuff around it, like they were a great team. It was a great story too. They had a good little run, man. Yeah, yeah. Billy Gunn is one of the best tag team right. partners. Yeah, I think he's awesome. That anyone could have. He's he knows how to. Yeah. He knows how to find his way in a tag. He's kind of like like Cesaro is like it seems like he can create a great tag team with anybody, anyone, anyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another thing that we do that I don't feel a lot of people do, and I think this is just from our our sport days, is we'll actually watch film on people we're going to wrestle. Mm -hmm. Like we know we're going to wrestle someone, we'll send each other links to matches that they had. 
so that we're we're watching it like um and then when we go to to discuss the match with them they're like oh i, I do this one thing and i'll be like oh yeah you do this this and they're like yeah that's it because we know we we, mm-hmm. we studied their film we know what to do um it just it it helps out know, knowing your opponent studying what what they do and yeah, and that's probably not terribly common because you know you end up working with a lot of different people, mm-hmm. and not everybody's going to take the time with that, right? Right. Yeah. So it definitely helps. Yeah. Film. Film, study. Film, Film study. Film study. Film study. Got to study the game tape. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. Awesome. Um, who are you watching these days? Who's got your attention? Any programming? Any promotions? Any individuals? Any teams? Like you mentioned the Netflix, of course, but you know, outside of that, like what's kind of uh, got your attention? I'll let you talk because. Um... Yeah. All right, I'll just say my piece first. I actually, <laughs> <laughs> you're probably going to kill me. I do not watch wrestling. Mm-hmm. And I have not for probably like two and a half years. So you're talking about like the main WWE stuff or no, just. You, you don't, you don't entertaining wise watch wrestling unless mm-hmm. you're studying. Unless I'm studying. Mm-hmm. Like I'll, I'll literally be at a, 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 an event and one of my best friends be out there wrestling. Mm-hmm. He'll come back. Oh, did you see that? Like, no, I wasn't. I don't watch wrestling, and I and I won't watch it. It's it's that bad, um, and it sucks. And I wish I was a fan again. Um, mm-hmm. But literally, probably like, yeah, like two and a half, like two two and a half years ago, I just like quit watching it. Like I was like, ah, you know, it got to the point where I was like, oh, I'll miss a Monday Night Raw. It doesn't matter. It's mm-hmm. it's fine. And then I'd miss like three or four in a row, and I was just mm-hmm. like, well, I really don't care too mm-hmm. much. So. Um, now people they'll mention the like um they'll mention wrestlers and i'll have no idea who they're talking about Mm -hmm. um the whole uh roman reigns and cena thing i saw the clip on facebook Mm -hmm. and i saw people sharing it so i just watched it otherwise i had no idea that they were even talking i didn't know they were facing each other anything like that um and i don't know what did it i don't know if being a wrestler (laughs) did it um that may be it because I was actually watching um, an interview with uh, Russell Westbrook, the basketball player, and they're asking him about um, different, you know, games and stuff like that. And he said, "I don't watch basketball." And you're like, "You're the MVP of the league. Would you watch basketball?" I don't watch basketball. And that's so, interesting because I hear that, you know, from time to time from people. And and, and is it, you know, and I, I think a fan's perception is like, oh, he's too jaded by the industry, or and, and, and it doesn't sound like that's the case with you, I wish for I sure. Did. But it's just, is it, is it? I'm so invested in this side of it, the other side of watching isn't fun anymore. That that may be it, um, because I absolutely love doing it. Mm-hmm. Like I cannot imagine, not like I can't imagine just saying, all right, well, I'm done wrestling. I feel like I'd lose my mind. Mm-hmm. So I love doing it. I love performing, but I, but as far as watching something, I'd rather binge watch Stranger Things mm-hmm. than to watch an episode of Monday Night Raw. It's it's really weird. And like I said, I wish I was a big fan again because I was the, the biggest fan. Like I went to uh, three manias in a row. Um, went and saw both Rock Cena's um, Miami and then and then in uh, MetLife like. It was ridiculous. I've traveled all over the place to go watch wrestling, and it just kind of just hit a brick wall. (laughs) I haven't recovered since. So maybe maybe Duke can talk about some of the people he watches. Duke, do you still love wrestling? (laughs) (laughs) That's what's going to be. Gannon doesn't love wrestling. (laughs) That's going to be the headline. Gannon hates wrestling. Well, (laughs) what's he doing? You know what's crazy is like I totally understand where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. Uh, I hit that like probably like seven years ago. I stopped this stop. Watching wrestling, I didn't care. Mm-hmm. Um, but I picked it back up. Uh, but I don't watch it like I don't watch SmackDown all the way through. I watch certain things that I care about, like a certain promo. I want to see a guy. I want to see his promo, mm-hmm. like the Cena promo. I wanted to see that promo, so I watch different stuff. Like what's really got my what. Honestly, what really got me excited to do tag wrestling again, like with tag, not again, but tag wrestling with Gannon, was I watched, um, I was watching NXT a lot when I was watching the revival. And I watched how they wrestled. And I was like, you know what? We can do that. You know, like they reminded me of like Tully Blanchard and Art Anderson. Mm-hmm. 
and, and, was, and, and guys that are half your size too. Yeah. Yeah. But they were telling a story, but not working like doing big spots. They were working smart. They were working a body part. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, man, like, this is awesome. You know, this is this is tag wrestling right here, not like a whole bunch of spots and, and then go back, mm -hmm. fight forever. You know what I mean? It was like, oh, this is nice. They're, they're telling a story and they're smart and they're like, you know, they're good wrestlers. And I was thinking like, man, I think I think I want to do that. And uh, that those two guys who I was watching a lot, the revival, uh, I was watching a lot of NXT, and then uh, I stopped. And now I'm watching old ECW. I binge watch ECW. <laughs> like I watch ECW way too much. Did you watch it when it was when it was on originally? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's kind of like uh, another thing is like uh, I used to watch it like when I wasn't supposed to watch it. Because mm -hmm. uh, she, my mother, caught me watching before, and she was like, and they end up there. She caught it at the beginning of the show. I don't know if you ever watched the beginning of the show, but they have people darn near naked, and mm -hmm. then they have someone going through a table, and then a guy, then a guy falling off a falling off the it looks like he fallen, New Jack jumping off mm -hmm. of uh, the bingo hall. Mm -hmm. So it was like my mother was like, "You're not watching that." <laughs> But then again, my TV is in my room, so I can yeah, yeah. let you go out. Yeah, it's like, it's like on. one in the morning, so or <laughs> whenever it was on, right? Yeah, but yeah, that's when I started. That was my my initial uh, love of this crazy stuff of wrestling was ECW, and I always watch it before matches. That's awesome. What is the best and the worst thing about wrestling for you guys so far in your career? Talking about experiences, or yeah, just... yeah, yeah, you guys in indie wrestling, what's the best and the worst of it so far? You can take that however you want with it. Um, for me, uh, the the worst part, and I guess it's not that bad, um, but it's uh, I think everyone kind of has a vision for themselves, and they they know where they want to be, and or you know how far they want to go doing this crazy sport. Um, so I guess the worst part I would say is the frustration of, um, of that, that thought in your head, like, am I just doing this just because, you know, I'm just doing it. And then, you know, five years, I'm still going to be doing exactly what I'm doing now. Or am I going to get fed up and quit? Or am I going to actually make it? I think like those thoughts to me, me personally is the, the not knowing. Yeah, like the unknown, mm -hmm. I would say, I guess, is the, the worst part. Um, but best part, I, I would say, is um, regardless of what, you know, company you're working for, you know, you're essentially living out your dream of being a professional wrestler, which is you know, the coolest thing in the world. You know, you, if someone would have told me when I was seven years old watching Hogan, you know, turn on, uh, you know, the good guys and join the NWO that, that I was going to be a professional wrestler one day. I'd be like, no way, no way. <laughs> um, so just to be able to do that and go out there and, and you know, get a reaction from people, whether it's positive or negative, booing you or cheering you, I think that is awesome. So that's, I wouldn't change that for anything. For sure. Yeah, I think it's like little, basically the same thing, man. The worst part is, I, I, I changed the word part a little bit for me is the it's a second guessing. Yeah, it could be second guessing anything uh that you do so much of up until when you go out. <laughs> it's like you second guess yourself so much that you drive yourself crazy. Uh and then the second guessing when you come back so much to the next it's like a it's like everything is right in the world. Once I'm outside that curtain, like mm -hmm. that's the best part. Once I walk out, once we walk out, it's like this is the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. The reaction, it could be booze, it could be cheers, it could be wins, losses, whatever. The best part is being right there, and and then everything else is kind of like secondary. Like you know what I mean. The worst part is the is the like oh man, how did that look? You know what I mean? That's like how how did I look? And so it's like I may ask someone like fifty five times how did that look? What did that look like? How did that mm -hmm. look? But I'm not asking because I'm crazy. I'm just asking because 
I don't know until I and when I see it, I'm still like, did that look? How does that look? Mm-hmm. You know, it's a second guessing, but the best part is just being out there and being in entertainment and being active. It's the best part. I can't explain it to no one ever. Unless, awesome. you, unless you wanted to do this, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Guys, we've been talking about your social media. You guys are everywhere. You guys, can you list it off one more time? Do you remember all this from after the Mayhem show? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitter is at locked in, the letter N, loaded, underscore. Uh, at uh, On Instagram, it's at we are locked and loaded. It's the whole thing, like the whole word. We are locked and loaded. Um, Facebook, it's locked and loaded. Uh, you can uh, basically find us in any search bar. Uh, we have it's called an athlete's page. You can find us there, uh, and you can check us out on our website at wearelockedandloaded.wordpress.com. There you go. Follow them, like them, share them. Tell tell you tell your best friend who likes tag team wrestling about them. Absolutely, all that stuff. Check them out in the uh, International Wrestling Cartel. Uh, and where else? Um, you know, depending on when people find this, generally, are where are you popping up in the next uh, next few months? What promotions? Um, yeah, as you yeah. said, yeah, IWC, um, we will be, uh, as we said, September 30th, we'll be in a tag team tournament for premier championship wrestling out in Cleveland. Um, we, uh, wrestle for, uh, rise wrestling, which is out in Connellsville. Um, and we've been, uh, in talks with a few, uh, different promoters also in Ohio and in West Virginia area. So I would say over the next six months or so, um, we'll be seeing a lot of, Locked and loaded all over the place. Yeah, still a BD, BDW or formerly or I've never wrestled for them. I, I did. You did? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, we're in talks with them as well. Okay. Uh, the West Virginia, we're in talks with them. We're coming in. So stay tuned. And it's Black Diamond for anybody Black interested. Diamond. Yeah. Uh, and, and Rise and, and Connellsville, of course, uh, or the Moth Furnace, Furnace, I guess. Yeah. Technically, yeah. technically. where Lamont where the great uh, Stomp Out Cancer was, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, I think. Duke. Just Duke was on that yeah, one. Yeah. So I remember that one well. <laughs> but uh, anyways. Well, I got to watch your back, Mike. I got to watch my back. I'm like, he walked out the curtain and stared at me, and I'm in the dark. I'm like, what's, what is what is this? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a thing, apparently. Um, but uh, no, check them out. Thank you so much. Uh, a lot of fun matches. And like I say, especially in this past year, uh, seeing you guys a lot uh, in singles and tag teams now. And uh, look forward to see what you guys do uh, now with the Internet Wrestling Cartel, uh, uh, Premier Wrestling. Uh, both of those are, of course, uh, on IndieWrestling.us if you want to check out. And, of course, the Stomp Out for Cancer. Uh, we're still selling that on DVD and digital download. And proceeds from that uh, go to, of course, American uh, Cancer Society as well. Still trying to raise money for them from awesome. that show. And they did a great job with that. And I'm looking forward to see what they do in the future. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks for having us. Duke Davis again, Jones Jr. This is the Indie Mayhem Show. And until next time, please support Indie Wrestling. Oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.